In 1989, when five African-American and Latino teenagers were accused of raping a jogger in New York Central Park, Trump bought a newspaper ad suggesting they should be executed. The so-called Central Park Five were later exonerated. Yusuf Salem was one of those defendants. He joins me now uh, from Atlanta. Yusuf, thanks so much for joining me on the Sunday afternoon. Very much uh, appreciate it. It's good to talk to you. Uh, you oh, wrote it's an, my pleasure. You wrote an op-ed uh, back in 2016, and, and you wrote, Trump has smeared dozens of people with no regard uh, for the truth. So, so I imagine, Yusuf, uh, you were not surprised by the president's reactions this last Saturday uh, to Rob Porter. No, not at all. To me, it's all institutional protectionism, you know, and that's the part that's unfortunate because we live in two different Americas. One America where your rights are protected, we'll help you out, you know, it's the good old boys club, and the other America that people spell with three Ks, where the darker enclaves of society, you know, we see things happening all over the place, and especially with regards to the Central Park Jogger case, here you had <clears throat> Donald Trump two weeks in, taking out the full-page ad, rushing to judgment, finding out 13 years later after he did all of that that we actually were not the real culprits but yet he still stood and continues to stand on the side of history which makes absolutely no sense but here we have clear photos we have a person uh, t saying hey I need to leave this administration uh, I smeared myself so to speak you know and Donald Trump is saying oh wait hold on let's let's not rush to judge let's give this person due process I mean hey he very strongly said that he didn't do it it's, it's, it's really um, amazing that he would say these types of things, especially in today's age where we see people getting shot down on TV, we see all kinds of atrocities happening, and people basically just getting a slap on the wrist, if that, and allowed to go on with their lives. The Central Park Five, their families, the community around the families, we were not able to move on with our lives. Our lives were completely destroyed and devastated. Any kind of dream and, and idea or kind of goal that we had to be anything in life was, was quickly erased by this accusation, by an accusation. You, uh, there was another Central Park Five uh, defendant, Raymond Santana, uh, and he tweeted this uh, in response uh, to President Trump's due process tweet yesterday. He wrote, you should have spoke like that back in 1989. You called for the death penalty. We were 14 and 15 year old kids. Um, have you heard from the others, from the other Central Park Five? Have you, oh. uh, have you talked to them? What, what, what's been the conversation between you guys? You know, we talk about these kinds of things all the time. We've been, we've, we've become brothers through this process, you know, brothers through the fire, you know, and we're very, very close. We're very um, much in communication with each other. A lot of us try to hit things from different angles. I'm a motivational speaker, so I'm always out there on the circuit uh, pushing out positive messages and things like that. And I most certainly spoke to Raymond about this thing. And it was like, you know, the audacity of someone who called for our death, who very, very well this thing could have turned into a modern day Emmett Till. We became modern day Scottsboro boys. And so that tweet that, that uh, Raymond put out there was so on time and so on topic, you know, um, and I was just really congratulating him, you know, again for doing <laughs> some amazing work you know, on Twitter, you know, to combat these things that we see Donald Trump continuing to do. Yusuf, um, uh, the president in his tweet, as I mentioned earlier, he had said that lives are ruined uh, by yes. these false allegations. What was your life like? after being wrongly accused? You know, everything that a young person uh, values, the social interaction, the, the uh, feeling that you have worth in the, in the society and the community that you're, that you're coming from, um, that stuff is gone. You're turned immediately into a pariah and you have to try to live your life in spite of all of that. And it's very, very difficult because as you can imagine, if you walk through life being told that you're worthless, you yeah. will begin to act like you are worthless. But the fact that, as my mentor told me, uh, Les Brown, that you were the one out of the 400 million sperm that made it, that means you have purpose. You have something great to do in this world. And I'm so proud and, and, and honored to have the opportunity to still have my faculties, still be able to speak to these kinds of issues to make sure that never again will there, never, will there be another Central Park Five. We're trying to balance the scales of justice. But in fact, what we see is corruption being the law of the land. Corruption out of the mouth of the president himself saying that, hey, you know, you can go into the, I, I usually go into uh, the, the, the rooms and see the, the young ladies. Uh, he said he called them young ladies, but they were teenagers. Yeah. You know, uh, they're new, they're getting dressed, they're getting ready, they're getting prepared. 
but he's doing something out of his own affluenza that is very dangerous, very, very dangerous, because now in the, in the era of Me Too, we have so many people who are being really um, shattered because they had to go through these things in order to rise up the ladder of success. You know, and, and, and it's tr truly a tragedy. It's truly, truly tragic. Well, Yusuf, it seems as if you are following your purpose and what you were meant to do here. Um, so I congratulate uh, you for that uh, and appreciate the work that you are doing out there. Yusuf Salam, thanks so much for giving us your time. Very much appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated.